you, welcome to Discord. Today we've got another episode of Game Room Tours. This is the series where we take in pictures or videos of your game collection. We take a look through those pictures and videos and we look for cool ideas for our own game collections as well as cool stuff that you've picked up along the way. Let's take a look. So the first game room that we have today comes in from Jonathan, and Jonathan has sent in a very nice, modern looking game room. You can see from this first photo, it gives us a nice wide shot of the area. He's got a lot of white shelving, a nice TV, and a lot of Pokemon. And one of the first things that I do notice about this game room is that there is a lot of Ikea going on. There's a lot of Billy bookcases, a Kalax unit for the TV stand, I think a Nedby or Gnedby, I forget, it's so hard to pronounce these things. But you get the point, there's a lot of Ikea going on in here, so if you're looking for any of these shelves, that's the place to look. But starting over at the right hand side, he's got a couple of these white shelves there just completely dedicated to video games. So this is like the video game library of this space. This is where you go to grab that game and stick it into your console. It's also a very smart place for the games to be. It's well thought out. The games are right next to the TV where you're gonna be using them. A lot of people put them on the other side of the room and there's nothing really wrong with that but I do like to see a little bit of optimization going on in a game space. Now moving to the left of that shelf you do have the TV stand which is actually one of these cube style shelves from Ikea. I call it a Kalax unit, I think it's a Kalox unit or something like that. All these things are hard to pronounce. But the point is these cube style shelves have a ton of space inside of them and have a lot of adaptability because Ikea provides a lot of inserts that you can use to kind of customize the feel. And on the very top of the shelf, of course, he has his TV stood up there, but underneath of that, on the first set of shelves, he has most of his consoles. So he's got his Xbox, his PlayStation, a Nintendo Switch, and a Wii U, as well as a Wii and a couple little figures put along the way there as well. I like how these top shelves where the consoles are don't feel too corroded by too many extra things put into there, because you're always gonna be taking those discs and putting it into your consoles all the time. You don't want a bunch of stuff in the way. But the next shelf down from that is where you get into these inserts and one of the inserts that I really found that was interesting unusual and really helped divide up the space were these wine racks that IKEA has for the Kalax unit they essentially divide up the space into nine smaller cubes so you can use it for something like this where he's using it to divide up all these different types of pokeballs that he has on these shelves as for this kind of middle area he's got a couple figures in one of the shelves kind of taking up that space that's why these Kalax units are so fantastic because they can actually take some of these larger figures and actually fit it into the space there's just so so much headroom in there and so much space it's it's a great way to get these figures on display. As for this great insert left of center here, this is no longer carried by IKEA. They discontinued this a little while back. I made a video about these a while back as well, and I let everyone know when these were available and what they were really good for, and I hope that the people who wanted them got them at that time. It's another reason to make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get all the notifications when these come out so you can be the first to grab these things before they disappear off the face of the planet, because a lot of display stuff just disappears. And then of course the shelves down below Below that he has a couple of the other inserts and these are inserts that are doors and drawers and you can grab these at Ikea as well they're not that expensive you know with, once you get all these parts together it starts adding up to be a much more expensive deal but Ikea generally is very inexpensive but the cool thing about inserts is for the most part you don't really have to have any know-how when it comes to putting things together you just put the insert together and then you slide it into the Kalax unit. I believe some of them have adhesive so you can stick it into there as well, but for the most part, this is not a big process of, of doing anything. But of course, Ikea, you know, remember Ikea, you're putting stuff together. It's, it's, it's an experience in its own. Now moving to the left of this TV stand, there's this floating shelf kind of design here with these sticking out leafs out of the wall where he's got all these Pokemon I forget what they're called, they're not Lego, but they're another type of Lego that you put together. I put a couple together myself and, and they are really fun to do. But I really like these when it comes to displaying some figures or even some old retro consoles being put on here. Maybe finding a way to route some wires into it would be really cool. But I like these because you can see all the angles of the item. So no matter where you're looking at this, unlike a regular shelf that has the edges on it so that you can't really see into it from the side, this makes it so you can see it from pretty much any part of the room. Now moving to the left of that, you can see that there is another kind of half shelf down here which has just all Pokemon figures and Pokeballs and Pikachus and just every Pokemon in the universe is packed into this shelf. 
but it's kind of awesome because it doesn't seem like it's packed in. It doesn't seem like there's too much going on. I feel like the, the white shelves themselves help kind of make it feel bigger, give it more space. Even if you're putting things kind of close to each other, it gives it this feeling like there's more space between them, and then it doesn't feel like it's just over encumbered. Another thing to notice about this little half bookcase is that there's a lot more shelves in it. And that's a nice thing about Ikea is you can go and buy extra shelves to put into your cases and then you end up with a lot of different ideas that you can go through. There's all sorts of different sizes of Billy bookcases so you can end up with different sizes and make dividers and, and do all sorts of stuff with this. But it seems like he's added a couple more in here or maybe just one more to give it smaller shelf space. He could fit more figures in there, divide it up a little bit better and it doesn't get too crazy. And getting another angle of this area, you can see he's kind of dividing up the space in a way. He's got the half shelf and then the full size shelves next to each other kind of alternating. And then above the half shelves, he's using that for some art space. So some posters or some design work. It's, it's really interesting to see this and I, I really like it. And across the board, most of these shelves have a ton of figures. Like I said before, most of the games are right there next to the TV, so he's got all this other space for these figures, for these little custom items, and these special things that he has in his collection. And this particular half shelf here that he has on the wall also has a lot of notable items in it as well. At the top of it, I believe what he has here is a cosmetic display, either for nail polish or for other items. You can find these kind of clear tiered displays. That's what I use for a lot of my Game Boy games, and it works really well for things like this. A perfect place to put a bunch of these handheld games and these Game Gear games and get them all up there on display so you can see that artwork. Game Gear games are fantastic because they're some of the biggest handheld games that you can find. And down below that, he has a Starlink display, which I think is pretty awesome. A couple ships in there, a bunch of different weapons that he has out there on these tiered side displays on kind of a 45 degree angle. You can tell there's a lot of attention to detail that went into just this one small spot and placing every item so that it looks really good. And then a really nice display underneath of that, of course, he has a bunch of Pokemon card binders down there. And he has those on some of these easel displays that are e easily... Res <laughs> easel? Easily. These easel displays that are easily, uh, easily accessible at your local craft store. But I like the symmetry of this area. He's got the 25th anniversary Pokemon binder at the front, as well as the Pokeball binders kind of going to the back in this kind of tiered fashion. It looks really nice. But just taking a step back and looking back at this space again, there's just a lot of modular stuff going on. You have figures, you have a space for books, you have a space for Pokemon cards, you have a space for the Starlink stuff. There's all these little divisions that kind of divide up these shelves. And I really like that as opposed to kind of meshing everything together and mixing everything up. I like these kind of little sections, these little pods of display. I think it looks really nice. It's also a, like a really bright area because of these shelves. These, this white is really nice. He's also sent this wide shot that gives you another idea of where we're going next. And on the left side of this photo, you have another one of these glass cases. I believe this is again from Ikea. And this glass case is 100% being used for retro consoles. I have to say, this has got to be my favorite way to use these cases because look how these consoles look inside of this case. You get to see all different angles of it. They look like they're in a museum. It is a really fantastic way to show those consoles and have them be part of your collection continuously. I think it's much better than throwing them in a box in your closet and just saying goodbye to them, especially if you're not playing them all the time. This is a good way to just have them out there so you can remember all those good times you had. This angle also gives us an opportunity to look at where the, the chairs are. He's got a couple comfy, super comfy chairs in there, as well as behind that up on the wall, which is this really nice piece. And while the rest of the collection is amazing and awesome and bright and, and just looks really clean, I really do like this wall piece that he's put together here with all of these lead shelves. These kinds of floating lead shelves are perfect for any game space that has wall space available, especially a space like this, which is gonna be behind the chairs. This is gonna be what you see before you go and sit down and start looking at your TV to play your games. In this case, he's using it for a lot of his handhelds, so this is a great way to just be able to have a quick grab location for your handhelds. You can grab that handheld, put the card in there, and start playing right away. But you can also change these shelves up anytime you want by adding different little bits of nostalgia here and there. He's definitely had some things framed before, and I really appreciate somebody who's going out and framing things. He's got some Pokemon cards framed there on the right, as well as other little things along the way inside that are framed and put onto these ledge shelves. And lead shelves really work well with that kind of thing. You can put vinyl, you can put uh, posters that are framed, you can do, put all sorts of things on these kinds of lead shelves because they have that little lip at the front and they act like an easel stand. And that's not even the end of him using walls to their maximum ability. You go to the next wall to the left here, and he's got controllers mounted to the wall here. And yes, 
it's time for a pro gamer move. But you can see he's got these awesome pegboards. These also come from Ikea. You can grab them there and get all these different pieces to put on them. They look really nice, especially compared to other pegboard options that are out there. I've looked through a bunch of them and I think the Ikea ones definitely look the best overall, the work the most in most environments that you'd put them in. But like most pegboards, it's completely adaptable. So he's adapted this one to hold a bunch of his controllers as well as some other odds and ends. But with this pegboard down here, he's got all of his controllers mounted to it, all this adaptability. He can put any controller there that he wants and use it as kind of like his James Bond room. You walk in there, you grab your controller and you walk over to the TV and start playing. As well as, you know, some of these controllers maybe he's not using anymore but they're out here on display so that he can see them every day that he comes into his game space down below that area he also has another TV stand with a small CRT television for your retro games and VCR and that kind of thing and then of course some of the best displays that you can use for your controllers are down there as well which are charging displays if you can find a display to charge your controller and display it at the same time, you're in really good territory. And down to the right of that, there's also a Deadpool Cable Guys stand. I like these Cable Guys stands because they come in all sorts of different characters and they're kind of a little bit of fun to throw into your game space. I don't know about getting all of them or putting them all over the place, but I really like them as just a one-off item in a game collection. And that mostly wraps up this game room. Outside of lighting, I always like to see these kind of night versions of game spaces to see what they look like when you're actually playing games, how it feels. He's got his space completely lit up. He's added LEDs to the backsides of a lot of shelves and his TV stand. He's got this kind of red and blue motif going on. It's really awesome at night. Really like to see that kind of night mode version of people's game rooms to see what it's like when people are actually playing games. So big shout out to Jonathan. Thank you very much for sending in your game room to Game Room Tours. This is an awesome Awesome collection very bright very modern and everything's really well spaced there's no place that I felt like I was hung up on or or feeling just like dread from looking at so much stuff kind of mashed together it's a, just a really cool place to look through so thank you but outside of that I really appreciate everybody coming by commenting liking the video hitting the bell all these interactions really help with the algorithm and pushing this channel forward and we're definitely moving forward all because of you so thank you very much I hope you guys have a fantastic day today and collect what you love Take